And now the talk, five AIs, FBI, Europol. These organizations have been trying to abolish end-to-end -end encryption. And this talk from Erich Möckler will give us an insight in this world, describing what has been happening in the last five years. And he will also explain what will happen in the next couple of days. Especially the last two months have been very intense. Hello. I greet all of you, all of the ladies and gentlemen. So let's go right into the middle of it. You probably have noticed those pushes by the um, parliament to get rid of end-to-end uh, -end encryption from the net again. And I have packaged this talk into uh, several articles that I wrote, but they're over time. So let's start with something very current. The, there was a resolution that was not apparently non-binding, or at least that's what they claimed. And it has already spawned off a new um, implementation law, like an ordinance. So a non-binding resolution by the by the, um, the the commission was already put into an ordinance. So it's about a, a super secure um, encryption standard that they have turned. And it's the same all the time for the EU. There, there's a non-binding resolution and there's another decision by the by the council and this is the the normal process we're at the stage in the process where already this is being um, tied into other legislation that is happening right now and this is concerning the high security encryption standards and monitoring that is important for us. It is basically a, a reenactment of Orwell again. And I want to show you today that this basically didn't come out of thin air. It was already started in 2014. And I want to refer to the basically the history of it that was laid down by Netpolitik. He, Matthias Monroy, basically laid down a similar timeline with a very granular, fine, finely detailed history of the the whole affair. Whereas I want to do a high level bird's eye view over the whole process. And beginning 2014, everybody's um, yeah running around like chicken. This diagram shows the network traffic. In 2015, and you can see it wasn't even a third, and before that, it was even less. So, it was the leaks by Snowden that the golden age of monitoring in the internet stopped, and the, the global siphoning off of data in the internet had to end. And they immediately went at it, and 
the the encryption increased massively and then police had a major issue because they used to take a lot of data from the telephone networks metadata content they had a um, yeah, they basically get, got a, um, a decree by a lawyer, by a just a judge, and they were allowed to take anything out that they could find. And now we were going where it started. It wasn't in Europe. It was in the USA. You, for example, the W3C, the hardening of the internet, the uh, TLS, the IETF, they've been pushing encryption back then. And in the time after Snowden, there was a bit of a break where um, legislation about surveillance wasn't very popular. And they basically all went at it at the same time. Europol, GCHQ, FBI directors in the USA, and another one who I'm going to talk about later. They all said we need uh, access to encrypted communication, even including mobile phones, because we cannot do our work without it. And then there was the uh, the crypto plugin for the W3C browser was already ready. It was the the foundation for the encryption on the web back then. And 2015, there was a few um, EU Council. Um, commissions that said we need secure encryption, which basically went the opposite direction of what the others were saying. And the EU Council uh, dealt with it in the year 2015, and they wanted to weaken encryption. And in these two years, there was there was this guy, and a director Rogers uh, came out from the dark, and he's, he said that um, there is there was this um, um, assassins that could not be. Um, caught because they couldn't hack the phone and there that was when the first technical problems occurred and and then it was discovered that there was this um, security vulnerability called freak that was used by the NSA that and that was used to um, and the, the detection was really um, embarrassing because the NSA was asking for this, which and this happened. And and those of you who were part of the first crypto wars know that this was uh, an issue back then. And if you look at these um, ratings, you see that this browser has su supporting these uh, technologies and and there was this old RC4 uh, key which was really obsolete totally outdated but it was still supported and that was a really um, embarrassing moment for the NSA. October 2015, Let's Encrypt was, yeah, the Let's Encrypt certificates were recognized by all major browsers. That was an enormous um, push against the NSA. And directly after the revelations by Snowden, um, Let's Encrypt has been founded. The FBA campaign 
that said, oh, we can't get access to the iPhone of the assassin. And they complained. <laughs> yeah, but, but here we are. There was the next demand to get some um, back doors and they wanted backdoor keys for all iPhones, otherwise they couldn't do investigations. And there was a huge um, vulnerability in the firewall of um, of a device that is uh, currently unclear. Let's Encrypt started at the end of December yesterday. So it, it started and here we see after a short while with regard to encryption, 50% of internet traffic is encrypted. With some imagination, you can imagine that that those people who work at the switches, who, who, who were, were doing the surveillance, they were really unhappy about this. There was only encrypted traffic. So they couldn't just just steal the data. 2016, not that much happened, except that there was another embarrassing thing for the F FBI. Because because they locked themselves out out of the iPhone that they were investigating. And so they couldn't access the data. And the first campaign that they tried was really ridiculous. But that didn't stop them. Um, did not stop them to continue their uh, demands. And now we are at the end of the first part. At the end, um, Ende, de, Ende de, äh, von 2016 haben sie, de, haben sie sich dann wieder vorgetraut. At the end of 2016, they tried to attack encryption or Europe. It was a concentrated campaign from the beginning. Die abwechselnd auf den Kontinenten gespielt wurde. And the only objective of that campaign was to push out end-to-end -end encryption from the internet. It was not possible for the secret services to just say, we, we forbid end-to-end -end encryption. And obviously that's not possible, because even they knew that uh, they couldn't just ask for end-to-end -end encryption to be removed. Maybe in the 90s, but it's too late for that now. Yeah, so the investigators were rather unhappy that they couldn't access the data. And netpolitik.org reported that for the first time that um, remark from the translation, I did not. Yeah, okay, so, so they had less telephone um, surveillance at this point because it was not possible to obtain the data.
du kriegst nur mal einen begrenzten Datensatz aus dem Telefon raus, wird da fetzt alles i to i drüber oder Because now all the traffic, even in the phone lines, is encrypted or basically the phones are not used. But of course you could still get a phone, uh, the, the mobile location data you could still obtain. But it wasn't like before. For that reason, for that reason, the, the powers that typically don't like to work with each other have joined forces and published so, so this is really new f half an hour ago um, so about the current planes in the council so there has to be some possibility to get at the contents of the end-to-end -end encryption so that there is like as a secondary key that decrypts uh, the data. Something that is also not uncommon, or that is common, uh, that happens in some companies where there is a secondary encryption key or decryption key. Because it shouldn't be that for companies that only the employee can decrypt. And that's what they demand now. And now the stream. And this is the new guideline. So they want to um, have a successor for the network uh, melder um, flecht so that the duty to report information and and the council said we're going to do a resolution so the EU Commission basically said they understood and we're, we're going to do it so they started and started some random measures even before the resolution was signed in diesem Richtlinienentwurf and in this resolution about high class security encryption and it seems like this was a yeah it wasn't it wasn't a fair dealing so with the, uh, the resolution that they were proposing they, they're waiting for the bill they're not gonna publish it now because it was always propelled forward by uh, terror acts and you can see the the growth in whatsapp over the time frame that this talk covers from august 14 to and the 19 and the 19 and more and more traffic emerged that none of them could access and all of these surveillance um, measures always well the basic legislation about surveillance always covered telephone networks and it didn't cover all of these over the on top services that we now use how they over the top that's what they call them basically anything that is tcp ip is already over the top for a telephone network so now we're in 2017 and this is where the direction emerges where the council only passed the resolution now but they've been preparing it back then already and you can see it here 
Already in January, there is a new Etsy standard for surveillance of uh, social networks. And in Etsy, they prepare the interface for getting the data out of the social networks. They need a certain format for the surveillors to be able to process the data. So this is what standardizes it. And they've already prepared everything for transporting the data. Or an architecture that they that they need for the surveillance, but it's nothing new really. It, this is the way it always worked for surveillance in in the EU frame. Basically, there's always there's a whole host of small measures that get that work together to have more tools for surveillance. Basically, the they 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 always uh, use the same um, cover up reasoning like um, terrorism or uh, breaking down of society in order to justify this. And this is already in the council. It all happened at the same time, a lot of these measures. And at the end of 2017, they reached a state. It was the presidency of Austria at the, that time. The only thing I can say is the, the only thing I can say is that basically Austria was competing for the worst or last place with Germany, they, they basically only passed surveillance legislation. It was the complete agenda of the Austrians was geared toward passing more surveillance law. So don't feel too bad about your German politicians. Ours are even worse, probably. So the, the biggest priority was um, surveillance regarding Facebook. Our minister um, published the information, and yeah, obviously that when the news got out, it was all over the media. They basically already created the interfaces, the technical interfaces, which had one small problem. Basic, the the main one being that none of these internet companies that we're interested in never really sit in our countries. So when you want information from them, basically they have to ask the uh, law enforcement in Ireland to pass it on to them and to force them to comply. So over the years, this became more and more complex. And all of these surveillance standards, they became less and less usable and they became more and more complex and there were more and more requirements for that but in 2018 what started in 2017 finally came to pass on all layers of the EU, it started at the same time. Austria said that uh, surveillance of Facebook needs to have priority over everything else. There was an e-government ordinance. And the EU was really insistent on having a, an agreement with the US regarding the cloud surveillance. In essence, you can you can have surveillance on my cloud services if you grant me um, surveillance on your end. So, more or less, all of the cloud services are all US companies. So 
viel mehr haben die USA. The, the US basically passed on the agreement and said we're just going to have our own legislation since all of the uh, internet provided, so the, the, the service providers are all our companies, we can just unilaterally get that. And they have passed a law that allows them to get data off of Facebook. It was basically out of the question that it would pass in 2018. They didn't, it, they didn't uh, have the time to prepare it. And now they have um, surveillance that transcends borders in a bill. Uh, basically, if you if you get an order to do it, then you have six hours to comply with that. So if the the Austrian government says, "Look, we need the data," and talks to you as the German government, then you have to comply and pass it on within a few hours. So any major law that you break should be enough. Also, das würde es theoretisch ermöglichen. Es ist bis heute nicht durchgegangen. Solution has never passed until now, so um, law enforcement across borders hasn't passed yet. So the, the Austrian telecommunication is still secure to a degree. And then there was a lawsuit regarding um, access to encrypting messengers with regards to Facebook. And it was about the implementation of the SDE5 protocol. They look at the, key, the encryption negotiation that happens in the beginning where you try to settle on a protocol. It, they send it across the Facebook server, and that's an invitation to just catch the key when it passes there. Okay, so what what does this have to do with encryption? A lot, actually. So in 2015, there was there was a GHT. Um, if they could have a third key for the uh, providers so that so if they could do the decryption for the secret services and on the same day and when that was revealed, there was the demand that we need this, because otherwise the system will collapse. And the police said the same thing. So all, all of the law enforcement basically said that. And the EC said that they could off uh, suggest a new security standard for encryption. It is a TLS a one two successor that can be. Um, so they suggested a successor that is broken, basically. But <laughs> and then there was this protest because it was not a tr secure transfer layer, so the name was misleading of the successor. And the, the United States wanted to have a data exchange with itself, and then, of course, the terror debate came back. That were the attacks in Christchurch, New Zealand, that triggered these um, <laughs> calls for uh, breaking encryption. And, of course, the... <laughs> 
um, government Trojans are getting more expensive. And on the 1st of December 2019, the Club of Bern uh no one moment it's the a big briefing of the ministers and uh, so they they argued that they really need this and they were referring to an agreement made in 2016 that they made across different institution, institutions so, and um, and on this day, there was a briefing of the Club of Bern for the ministers, and that is the club of twenty-six or twenty-seven countries with their secret services. Uh, who were discussing important matters on an informal basis. Yeah, but what did they discuss or what did they say to each other? But in February of this year, there was the plague. There was a new law in the US Senate, the Earn IT Act. And and that contained to when provider, when platform is in the lag if platforms are not able to identify all of their all of the content they are hosting then they lose um, lose the right to just say they are innocent or not involved and that's why it was argued that end-to-end -end encryption should not be supported and and then there was also someone from the EU that said we need to do something against the EU and we don't want back doors, we want front doors. That was something that was already demanded in 2015, golden keys, but it's just like new language, it's, it's, it's nonsense. Just because there are no doors in technology, it's and the, the EU guys said in the council um, in air quotes. Um, so this is what the law says that we need to investigate if um, child uh, pornography can be identified in the data stream. Yeah. And then they did a study about this. And it was not really clear what so you should be able to identify them according to the hashes used in the encryption and then the German council presidency had the idea uh, where they, there are seven methods that they put down in a document where they wanted to have seven 
properties or seven methods that where you can identify encrypted traffic but it turns out that none of them actually worked what they did was they took the method by the gchq and used it completely differently and basically a second key using it during the encryption process and they added a lot of nonsense about uh, child pornography and how to identify it and it was highly misleading they wanted to prove that this was the only way to do it so so in the USA, they passed a law about accessing encrypted data for Signal and WhatsApp. And that's the same that Kerkhoff is trying to do in Europe. It's, it basically, there was a choreography just like in Belay. In July, there was a new EU regulation against secure encryption, but nothing concrete has been announced yet. The, basically, there's a lot of uh, petty fogging the issue, that, saying that the, the problems will increase so much that we're not going to be able to handle it. And in the USA, they so much that um, fighting end-to-end -end encryption is not the name I would use anymore. It's just too weak for that now. Oh, maybe I missed one thing here. Okay, sure. Uh, no, it's not that. Oh, it's missing. Oh, maybe I, I need to add one more uh, step to this. Uh, this is where it is. So, this is a, a clear case of misinformation by an EU Commission member. So, I have a little bit of time left. Let me explain this. In July, she announced that several platforms need to be searched for internet, uh, for child pornography on a regular basis, including encrypted communication, because the, um, the availability and the transmission of this kind of um, video has exploded over the recent time. And this is the result. Yet yeah, there has been an increase, but it's not an explosion in the traffic, but rather Microsoft rolled out a software called PhotoDNA already in 2009. It's basically a, a photo DB with all sorts of Digital, so the video is lagging for me. Basically, they, 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 they marked every video and photo that they could find and gave it a hash. And they basically base their filters on that, and they're already the filters are already running. But it only started marking up videos in 2016 because because that's when they gained the capability. And that means the explosion of the pedo-criminal content is more or less can be traced back to a software update. It was just not possible to find them before they were able to mark the videos. And since more and more platforms are integrating the tool by Microsoft and check every upload against that database, 
Yeah. So they all integrated it, and more and more videos were being highlighted as containing problematic content. That doesn't mean that the, the, the amount of video content increased, it's just that we can find more now. So... Yeah, I misclicked, sorry. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I have a, uh, an overview of uh, this, where you can... So this was all wrong. It was all misinformation. And then we get to the upload filters and the Ministerial Council was demanding they demanded upload filter even though they only solve a minuscule part of the, the issue. So they're claiming that if we can't filter against terrorists on your platform, then you're not being allowed to provide that service anymore. So none of this had anything to do with... with yeah, if, if you look at the latest terror attack, basically the guy had, had no contact to any um, inciting sources on the internet, nothing on the phone completely clean, but it was enough. So there was another bill. Within five days, they got it through the council because they basically said, now or never, we have to do it now. This is basically always the same process since 2014. Whenever there's a terror attack, push another piece of legislation. So beginning of November. So in that bill, they reference the international statement that was published earlier. So the international statement is nothing but a declaration by the five eyes ministers that to have a very close contact and and have a continuous dialogue with them especially with the UK regarding this matter because the third key scheme originated within the GCHQ and was published in 2017 for the first time and that's when I when I met the guy in in, in the University of Cambridge during a talk where he was already trying to publish this and where he was saying that the uh, um, the law enforcement branch needs extra keys for their for their work and this is what it's all about propaganda lies more lies behind the scenes agreement and a lot of theater where they brought it all together this is more or less all I wanted to say about this in breakneck pace, but you can read it all if you go to my website, have a look at it. 400,000 keys of text, and there's a lot of images on it. And this is where I'm going to end my talk. And... One I'm really curious if there's any questions about this. If people are interested, we can have a long Q&A in a different room if you want. And thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your attention and... Now let's open for questions. Yeah, Erich, thank you very much for this comprehensive explanation. And 
And there's so much information. Um, that's some really heavy stuff. We have some questions. Um, if you want to ask questions, you can send them on IRC or with Twitter RC3. And then one O N E R C three one as the hashtag to ask questions from IRC. The question: <laughs> What about um, changing of governments? As a German, I don't know <laughs> changes of government. Um, yes, yeah, so this actually changed. Um, yeah, so the parties just do what they want, and they, so this time I have to say that they have a different approach, it wasn't like the big outcry that we need to do more um, surveillance, no. Because the thing is that, um, that, that, that they had the um, terrorists on the radar, they were surveilling them, but they did not uh, capture them. And that was basically the reason why it had these headlines that they just could not decrypt the uh, information but they were aware of the people and they so in, in that with that regard this was like a, a positive development so the next question from the rsc what where do you see the surveillance or what what's the surveillance going to be like within the next five years okay well that's hard to say I can't honestly not answer that question. Um, so I'm, I'm doing this for 25 years and I'm reporting on it. But if you know a lot of history, then you can predict or extrapolate history into the future, but not that much. So more than 10 years, I don't dare to make predictions. So what will happen in the next five years on the EU level is that they, that they will repeat the demands that they and of course there will also the counter protest from the security researchers and it will be a long fight because the politicians and the um, secret services really really want this and the, the secret services are really um, desperate because in earlier years they just directly tapped on the internet uh, lines but it's no longer possible and they <laughs> They, they are really nostalgic um, about the good old times and that's and that's no longer the case and that's they that's why they want to re-establish uh, their powers or their capabilities but I'm already old enough <laughs> to just look at this with a bit of uh, sport spirit and we will basically catch them whenever they try to um, whenever they have the next demand coming up we will have an eye on the uh, surveillance uh, people that's, uh, and we, we caused a lot of bad press before the whole thing took off because we are keeping an eye on the new legislation. So, thanks a lot from the IRC community. Great talk. Even I have more questions. So, 
I'm wondering why is why is this or how could we make this more or less effective? So the way I see it is there is end-to-end -end encryption. How can you actually abolish that? Because can't you just can't you just put in an extra layer of encryption on top or below, which could hardly be broken? That is true. Uh, I actually think that they are fighting and withdrawing, but it's not like they can do whatever they want. They have they have a different they have additional people uh, institutions against them. Um, so, so it, it's because um, they no longer dare as to propose such something like this as a single country. They they basically try to push their demands as um, as a collection of countries. And we are ourselves in a good position because there's always some way we can protect ourselves or defend ourselves. And or if they actually try to attack signal, we don't know if they will do this. But I believe those, those people that just want to communicate normally, being social, or maybe just do business, um, that they um, so we, I think we're not in a bad position. And the United States is also trying to attack the big corporations. So so when they're um, really busy, then yeah, new basically new demands come up slowly. Yeah, another question from IOC: Are there specific instructions what we can do to stop this? Public, make it public. You need to involve the people on all levels, um, trade associations, they're all affected and they really don't like it if American services or clandestine services that are really active where they, they know exactly it's not just the Chinese that are grabbing for trade secrets. It's, it's only the NSA claims to be so holy as to not do that, but I believe the economy isn't trusting them at all. And those are all points that we have to do. This one thing that I took away from the crypto was where Anderson was really important. So basically, the crypto was 1.0 from 94 to 2000 and something when we won. We were the group that really was protesting, and we had a huge silent um, comrade. Do you know who supports us? Well, where we get our money from for the conferences? Basically, the banksters. The, the banks were supporting us because we, we were really surprised. We, we really couldn't believe it. They were trying to get uh, digital banking going and what they needed was secure encryption and that's why they said 
gibt, können wir was für sie tun. It was, it's great that there are so many banking groups because that saves us a lot of effort and time and we, we don't need our own astroturfing. This, do you know what that is? Basically, this is like a yellow union where a whole group for freedom on the internet is actually uh, trying to uh, yeah, stand in for, for the interests of some um, not so public organization that has sinister motives or at least their very own agenda. So, if you, by any chance, we're, we're probably not going to be perpetual friends with Google or Apple or Facebook or whoever, but if we if we can work along on certain issues, that's actually really helpful. Yes. What, what do you think of the Googles, the Amazons, the Apples? If you believe Apple, they, they, their reputation is on the line. Is, what do you think about them? So how can we prevent them from uh, smuggling in backdoors into our open source software? Yeah, I'm, I'm a... a I'm, I'm a linguist, not a computer scientist, and I'm not qualified to answer here. But I'm asking you to solve that problem yourself. You're the hackers, not me. I'm, I'm just um, yeah, an apprentice at best. What, what's regarding the IT? But I'm really, I've, I've been educated by the community and I'm really grateful for that. But I'm really sorry I can't answer that one. It's certainly possible. Build a build or something that they. Um, they poison some software, but this is it's not possible to do that on a large scale or to an extent where you cover most of the software. So I'm pretty so sure that uh, members of the CCC would notice pretty quickly. And I don't think this is a very persistent threat. All right. Then I think this is the end. Again, thank you very much. Und, uh, damit